Well, somebody's got plenty of retinas. Two here from the same person. Both three small C cameras. Different, uh, different generations, you could say. Slight differences in the manufacturing here. But let's see what it say, he says about them. They both look pretty tidy. This one. What's it tell me? The winding lever actuates the shutter cocking gear and advances the frame counter. Shutter speeds blades stick at all speeds. And the shutter blades are quite clearly stuck open. Let's watch the action of that. As I wind, the blades don't do much as the film advance comes back. They open, make a half, half an attempt to close, don't achieve it. So the shutter never cocks. Anything else with this one? Rangefinder works. Yes, it does. It doesn't even appear too bad, but it's as cloudy as not very good. The meter, well, there's not much to be done with meters. The selenium cells are all fading away, so either they're good or they're not good. We'll find out later. It's not the end of the world. You can use a handheld meter. You can use the Sunny 16 roll. You can even use an app on your phone these days. Right, so there's that one. Definite shutter problems. It's mate. This is slightly later. And this one, what's it say about this? Shutter does not fire. Okay. Makes a weak click. Doesn't actually fire. It doesn't. The blades never open. Looking at the position of the cocking rack, the uh, curved rack in there, I suspect maybe that um, cocking rack's jumped a tooth or something and it's not quite cocking all the way. But, again, we'll find out. Anything else about this? Rangefinder works, but check calibration. Well, this one, your viewfinder, the yeah, rangefinder's not bad and you can see through it a bit easier. Meter responds to light. That's always a nice thing. It does. Who knows about the accuracy there. Focus helicoid operates smoothly, but grease may be dried out. Yes, that's quite stiff. The V-timer jams. Needs cleaning. Well, it'd be pretty hard to tell what's happening there because that shutter's not actually cocking, so the self-timer's not actually likely to do anything useful. Right, so one at a time or both at the same time. Let's start with this one since I've got it in front of me. Since it's all coming apart, I'll take the shutter out straight away. Can we learn anything from looking at the shutter itself? Well, it's quite oily around that uh, shim. Can I cock it manually? I suspect this wasn't cocking all the way. Did that cock? Yes, and it fired. Okay. That uh, supports my theory that the shutter cocking rack has perhaps jumped a tooth. I'll put the lens and shutter assembly to one side. Let's inspect the body a bit further. Top cover off first, I think. So, three small C. We need to take off the rewind knob, which you can take off with your fingers. And some of these parts I'll stack up ready for cleaning. The meter dial comes off with the top. 
any three small C camera with a metal flap on the uh, meter, the meter dial stays with the top. Top cover off. Anything of note in here? Not immediately, looks quite clean. A little bit of corrosion on the top there. Nothing awful. Well, that washer just surfaced. That would have been under the rewind knob and that would have been used just to provide a little bit of lift to the rewind knob so it didn't scuff on the top cover. To have the meter off, put that safely to one side. The shutter release button can come off. The film release button can come off and I'll put the spring to one side. Looking at my shutter release shaft here, that's very gooey with uh, grease. The grease is quite clean, it's just sort of just gone gooey with age. The range finder, two screws hold the range finder in place. And pop that to one side. The strap lug at this end has been bashed in. I can tell by the funny angle of that. that that's been pushed in. Usually an indication the camera has been dropped. Strap lug at this end of course also helps hold the cocking rack down in place. There's nothing, can't tell from the state of that cocking rack how good it is. The teeth are all present, it just depends on whether they're still in a good condition. Of course that's only half the teeth we need to worry about with the cocking rack because the cocking rack has two sides. I'll just recover that shim washer. And there are teeth on the underside which couple to the other gear to the shaft that runs through the camera. I'll just hold it up to the light. Yeah, the teeth on the underside are here. The last couple of teeth look damaged to me. Most definitely. Alright, so that's damaged. Whether it's fatally damaged, I haven't decided yet. We'll see if we can do anything about rescuing that. Chrome trim from the top, that looks quite tidy. Have the strap, the uh, rewind off, two screws. That was, screw was a bit loose. Not enough to make a big difference to the way things work. Sometimes if, if that bush is loose, the whole rewind rattles about in a very disconcerting way. I'll take the clip off the lock lever, put the spring to one side. This is the release lever that releases the film advance to allow you to wind onto the next shot when you fire the shutter. single screw here
the gear from the top of the film advance, a washer, hit drive dog, hit spring. This piece and take that gear off. Two screws here. That's the that one is a shoulder screw, forms the post that supports the rack and stops it from keeps it in firm contact with the gear on the top of the film advance. At least that's the idea, and generally speaking it works well. Of course if there are other problems, or if the screws are loose, then it won't work well. Okay, so far so good. At the base of the camera, here we need to start peeling leatherettes. Well that leatherette looks loose but it's not acting loose. I'm going to peer under and see if I can see what adhesive is under there. No, I can't see. Some adhesives will soften uh, with a drop of naphtha. Some will not. And if they will not, you don't want naphtha there causing a prop well potentially causing problems it's it's not good for the leatherettes you can sort of get away with it you better not to have to just checking the state of that lever making sure that the disc on the bottom of the film advance is riveted firmly since I had a great deal of strife with the retina 3 big C not that long ago where that was not firmly riveted and it wasn't obvious it was loose. Alright, so that's that lever off. And the back catch release cover and tripod socket surround. Two small screws. Now one of those was quite reluctant to come out. Sometimes it's because they're bent. That looks okay. If the camera's been on a tripod, if the tripod screw is loose on the base of the camera, if the camera falls off the tripod or is given an extra good twist, sometimes you can end up with dramas. I've got to be careful not to lose that return spring. And this leatherette on the base, well the leatherette on the advanced lever didn't come off very easily. This may be different, it's not stuck to aluminium, it's stuck to chrome plated brass. And the adhesive can act quite differently depending on what it's stuck to. The centre part here is exposed. The chrome trim doesn't cover all of this, so it's quite likely it's more firmly stuck here than it will be at the edges. That advanced lever, the Leatherette patch on that looked to me like it had never been disturbed. 
which means that no one has had the leatherette off the base of this camera since the camera was made in about 1955 give or take a year When I worked at Kodak a long, long time ago, no one ever thought to struggle with leatherettes like this. If leatherettes didn't come off easily, they were just stripped off in pieces and you just got replacement leatherettes from the spare parts department. when you put the camera back together. Just checking my scalpel blade, it's not moving smoothly. I was just checking to make sure there was nothing sticky on there holding me back. I'm just going to put a drop of naphtha on that and that'll help that glide underneath the leatherettes easier. The leather it's really well stuck right here. Okay, where am I with this leatherette? I'm 
Leatherette is often brittle. You can't afford to fold it back sharply. You have to be very cautious about how you handle it. That's it. It's often one piece. There's a little bit of corrosion visible here, but nothing horrendous. That's that little part done. Now the chrome trim on the base of the camera. I think we've got a total of seven screws holding that in position. And yes, you'd be right if you're thinking they're fairly invisible. I just know where to look for them. So that chrome trim will need to be cleaned. Yeah, lift out our lock lever. The release lever, which has a spring on the base of it, which is there to keep it in firm contact with the cam on the base of the film advance shaft. I usually take that spring off before I do anything about cleaning these components like that because otherwise it's likely to get damaged. Alright, so now the camera will sit down flush on the bench, that's easy. The tripod socket screws are unusually tight. Commonly they're loose. You'll probably see there's a bit of rust on those screw heads. That indicates the camera has probably been put down somewhere damp. It might have been the tabletop, might have been the uh, concrete wall beside the pool or something. It, but it means that it was put down somewhere damp, moisture seeped up from the base of the camera. We have the door off the front. We've got two hinge pin screws. And there is usually one, two or three space of screw, uh, washers between the door and the body. I had one in my hand there but dropped it. There it is. Let's have that back out. Sticky with grease. There's another one there, so there were two at the top. And there was one at the base. And they just stopped there being any rattle in the door this way. Alright, the rest of this film advanced stuff, we need the rewind button off. button and its washer can go through for the cleaning. I usually separate off most of the mechanical components and they go through the ultrasonic cleaner. Not the exposure meter, not the range finder. Delicate pieces like that you need to deal with them in their own particular ways. Alright, so have that bush off the top of the film advance, and here's the clutch assembly. Have that apart. At the base of the camera, unhook the spring from the rewind button catch. 
that catch's job is to hold the rewind button in when you've pushed it in until such stage as you move the film advance again. Otherwise you'd be having to hold the rewind button in through the whole film rewinding process. And there are cameras where you have to do exactly that. That screw is loose. That screw was loose, and so was its mate. Okay, just pull this back and recover the three screws. Excuse me, that was just a wrong number. They were after someone called Ash. We have no Ash here. Right, out with the take-up spool. The front of the camera, I've got, it's a bit gritty here with the dust and rubbish that's come out. This ring at the front here couples to this screw at the top. And that screw moves inwards or outwards with the focus and couples to the rangefinder. Let's have that off. And the hinge joint here is important so that that can fold away when you close the front of the camera. Otherwise it would have to poke out the back of the camera and no one would like that very much. Let's take the two screws out that hold this chrome cover in place. And the little gear. Where's that other screw gone? There it is. Now, our focus adjustment here, if you needed to make one, is by moving the focus scale ring here in black on the outer helical here in gold. We're hopefully not going to need to do anything like that, because if it was good before, it'll be good when we back, get it all back together. So what I'm doing here is just checking the point at which the inner helical and outer helical are aligned. And I'll scribe a line across there that I can see. Now there'll be other marks that have been put in there before. During assembly perhaps or during service. And unless I can immediately see what they relate to I'd rather put new marks so that there's no confusion. Now I can remove the focus scale ring and I know exactly where it goes on the outer helical. Let's take this lot apart. Four small screws hold the retaining plate in place. These black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. These four screws here, these nickel plated screws, hold the focus mount to the front standard. Lift the whole focus mount out, recover those screws. This is very greasy. The grease will have come from the focus helical. Let's 
pop those eight screws into the, the basket for cleaning and lift out the inner and outer helical together here's the focus mount, it's pretty greasy in there the inner and outer helical, now I've marked these so I can see where they are aligned and I set the point at which they are aligned is where the front surfaces are dead level with each other I did that so that I can I will know exactly where things are to go when they're put back together all this front section I want out now the bellows are still stuck in here I'm just giving them a little push now they're dropping back two screws at the top two screws at the bottom this last round head screw here holds the bracket which holds the transfer shaft into the camera body you can get rid of that one first it's a very short screw yeah these screws are often very tight you're going to need some attention with the hammer I think yeah all four of those are tight I'll just get my magic tool 